In this video we'll cover K-Cycles, camera mode, overrides to give you the ultimate control for all your K-Cycle settings per individual camera. Instantly switch in the viewport and final render from the global scene settings for ultra lighting, post effects per camera setting. This adjustment can be done in real time without re-rendering. You can also duplicate cameras, test your different variations without re-rendering. New render cameras is an easy to use and powerful multi-camera render to the image editor or to a file safe with many features to quickly view and save the individual camera settings results. So I have loaded the BMW demo scene. If you look at the menu on your right, you see the new sections, camera mode with the active current scene camera. We have a section of cameras here, all organized. You can switch back and forth. And you're under it, you'll have a section of resolution for the camera, X and Y and percentage. What you notice also is this camera icon under resolution, ultra lighting and post effects. This switches camera mode setting where you can have individual settings per camera. You will have a separate set of settings when that camera is enabled. If you disable it, we go back to the scene settings. Start with post effects. Let's go into preview mode, enable camera mode. Start doing some setting changes. I'll do the Bloom, power to power to two, glare. So we want to set up a mask, do only the lights and select the lights and add the mask. Let's go to the mapping settings, adjust the exposure 0.5, contrast 1.2, saturation 0.7, white balance of minus 0.9. To get a much more blurred look, we want to do the, the car shell, select the car and add that mask. And we continue with lens effects, distortion 0.2. And a vignette of density of 0.5 and a size of 0.8. We can turn off and off the camera mode. Off, it uses the scene settings. On will be the settings that we just set for this camera main view. So adjust the global scene settings and just, just do only the tone mapping. Just a small adjustment just so we can be separate from the default and some contrast. Now let's change the camera to the exhaust. Enable the camera mode for the exhaust camera. The separate type of bloom, adjust it to the power of five. Do some glare, quick adjustments of the tone mapping. Contrast. Continue now to the tire camera. And let's adjust the tone mapping for this camera tire. Suppose we have one much higher exposure. Contrast, increase the shadows, some type duration. For this camera, I also want to change the, the resolution. So I'll open this and then I'll change it. I want it as a square. The camera icon mode is off. This resolution is going to always be matching the resolution of the scene output. So here you have your render resolution. You saw that it, it got changed automatically to 1080 degree adjusted. If I change this to 1920, let's go back to 1920. Turn on the camera mode. Set it to the square resolution that we want for, for this type of shot. Go to our main view camera and now let's change that resolution. Put in the camera mode and it, say we want something like 1600 by 900. Now to the exhaust view. This one we want to have it set to 1920 by 1080 standard. As long as we're in camera mode, we can quickly switch back to the tire, which is the square, 1080 by 1080, or the main view, which was at 1600 by 900. So it remembers the resolution for each camera, as long as you're in camera mode. Another new feature that we added, our render cameras. It allows you to render all your different cameras, all our cameras at once. We can render our selected cameras, or we can render the current active camera single, which will be, in this case, main view. The auto slot means that as you render, it automatically moves to the next slot. Currently, it is at the number one slot. So as you change slots, it will update this number. Increase the maximum slots available. Right now, it's a default at eight, but you can go to as high as you want to. And when it reaches that max slot, it will wrap around back to the first one. You can also give the slots the name of the camera. Doing comparison, it will be easy to, to know which camera you're viewing in the image editor. Clean up all your names after you've added them. When you want to start over again, do a file save. You can do your animation per camera. You can create a camera directory. So add the blend name to that file, avoid the overwrite and have an increment. So use the 
double slash, another slash, and that'll be relative to your Blender file directory. Call it under renders. And now let's render all the cameras. And I'll describe some of these options after we finish. So now let's look at the image editor to see the render results. Camera names and the resolution up here, the backside, exhaust with some of the bloom and tone mapping, front view, headlights, main view, and you can see the resolution is also matched to 1600 by 900, and the tire, which also has now a square 1080 by 1080 with the right tone mappings. Makes it really easy to find which camera is attached to its slot. So now let's look at the file safe folders for each camera and their relative directory of renders that we put in. And I noticed that we added camera name. The other one is adding the blend file with the blend option. This one is incremental, so it'll keep adding to that options. And you can see that settings here with increment, camera subdirectory, if you want to have the blend name attach and if you want to do your animation you'll do it per camera by selecting animation and it'll do the, the range for each camera do another type of render and you want to clean up your render names all you have to do is click reset slot names and as you can see all of them got reset to the default names and if you don't do that they'll the slot names will be safe with your blend file and now let's look at k cycles and all the effects work together with the real-time compositor. The main limitations of the Blender compositor is no per camera mode overwrite, only global scene settings for all cameras. You can enable it by preferences and the experimental real-time compositor. Do expect that this is an experimental feature and they could have bugs and, and crashes with this experimental new feature. Create a compositor window. This is our simple color node. Here's saturation. Let's change the hue to something just dramatic, just to change. So make sure that you also enable real time below the preview. And there you go. Now we have, we've combined both case cycles, post effects, and all the ultralight there with the real time compositor. And as you can change, and see the values, all of it's dynamic in real time. Or you can go back here and adjust, for example, uh, the bloom to something much more dramatic. So you'll notice that the difference. Sometimes there could be an artifact, rare, rare cases with the real time. So all you need to do is go back to your viewport shading and toggle back to shading mode and back to preview mode. And that will get you back to where you want. As you can see, you have affect all the bloom settings. You can continue with that. some of the exposure settings, uh, glare settings. Continue with that real-time composite, the same thing as you can see the hue. And you can change the exposure. And when you finish tweaking, you can go back and do a render single. And you'll see that it matches what we had in the viewport compared to the previous main view that we had. So everything is working integrated. So another great feature is be able to do in camera mode variations of the ultra lighting post effects and as long as you maintain the same camera angle everything basically instantaneous and without re-rendering so i've loaded our basic interior scene and let's go into preview mode i want to do variations of my room camera right now we have two cameras room glass and i want to do two variations of it so i'll do just shift d and shift D again, change the rooms to, I want to do a room daylight, room sunset, room for night. So I have my three cameras set up and let's start ultra light lighting changes and post effects. Camera mode. And let's start with 
the interior solar mode since we want more light from the outside we'll reduce the power on this one 2.6 we now go to the exterior if you want more light from the outside this is a daylight chain will increase the power to 1.2 add some contrast a slight white balance of 0.1 we've already increased the light coming into the room and let's complement it post effects tone mapping I, I enable the post effects camera mode tone mapping add more light more general light with a white balance a bit more yellowish and some tint 5.8 have more of a outside light sun coming into the room select the next variation we want to do sunset and you can see already that I can go from daylight and the beginning of our sunset is basically without re-rendering it instantly so let's start doing the changes to give it a sunset feel light adjustment for it start with the emission light group and increase the power see there's more light coming on from the room we'll do the exterior it's already getting a little more light brighter in the exterior adjust the map and adjust the power adjust the, the contrast to 1.1 and let's do a color tint 0.8 0.7 So you can definitely see now that the light is has a more of a reddish sunset look. And also let's do the whirl. I want more light coming in from the outside. Like more of a reddish sunset color. But we still need to do a little bit more adjustments. And post effects will help us. So post effects, let's add first the bloom. You can see already the light. There's some light blooming coming from the light bulbs. The mapping we'll adjust it exposure of 1.2 contrast balance of 0.5 for the color tint i'll use the same one that we had previously and we did on the light group exterior so we do control c control v and now we've finished our sunset look and you can compare with the daylight our sunset and let's do our last variation which is night enable the camera mode change emission we want to have even brighter interior bulb lighting increase that to five and on light exterior we'll we really don't want to have a lot of light from the outside so we want to really cut it down dramatically so very little ambient light from the outside. On the interior, we want to make it a little bit stronger. By 1.2. Start seeing that definitely there's a lot more of an interior lighting scene. The light will last. And here we probably can even cut it down a little more. And now at last, let's go and adjust our post effects. Make sure you have your post effect camera mode on. Bloom. We want to adjust. Now the good thing to do is to be able to use a mask. Just make sure that in the case of the other bright objects, you, you can control it by adding, selecting this, the first light bulb, then the second one, and then you add it as a mask. So only the bloom gets affected in that area only. Then we can adjust the power be wider if you want and let's find, finish up with that some tone mapping i don't like the dark feel too much on it it just feels just too dark under the table so let's increase the shadows slight adjustment on the white balance we've finished our room night variation sunset and a daylight all of them instantly adjusted you can you a lot of creativity to change things without, without having to wait for any re-rendering and with a lot of flexibility in all the light groups and post effects all working together and including your resolution mode select the cameras we want to 
render into our render selected we do slot naming so we can know which one we're doing right now we are stating so we don't need to file save start it now let's look at our editor look at our images and now we have sunset night and daylight all matching the same as in the viewport so thank you for listening and see you next time